Hi Beckman students, today I will be demoing how to do a couple cool things on Google Sheets so you have a couple more tools in your Google Sheets bucket. So you'll just need to have these two things open as we go through this tutorial. You'll need to have the Google Sheet that says student copy, hour of code Google Sheets tutorial, mine says demo in front of it because it's for the demo, and then there'll be a Google Doc that says hour of code Google Sheets practice, mine again says demo because I'm using it for the demo. All right, I will be demoing on the tutorial random data. As you can see, that's the title of the sheet down here. And we'll be learning to do a couple of things. So you can follow along. Step one, watching the tutorial and following along. So the first thing is how to freeze columns and rows. Now, the reason you want to freeze columns and rows is because as you sort your data, you don't want these columns and rows to be affected. If you can see in this top right corner, you see two darker, I guess, rectangles. These are the uh, things you can drag to freeze columns and rows. So the things I like to freeze are titles or, I guess, labels for what the data is representing. For example, over here, these numbers represent different days of the week. We're going to say one is Monday, seven is Sunday. Uh, meals are represented down here, and then calories per meal represented down there. I do not want to sort these titles. I want them to stay put. So I'm going to go ahead and freeze the titles by dragging this horizontal bar down below that row. I can also freeze columns, but I don't need to do that because this is all data that I do want to sort. So I'm not going to be using this vertical bar, though you can, depending on the data that you have. All right, so the next thing is how do you sort data? If you right click on any set of data, you can sort the sheet either A through Z, which is just alphabetical order or numerical order, or backwards Z through A. So again, Z through A, or it could be from biggest number to smallest number. We're just going to be using A through Z in this tutorial because you want things in the proper order. Let's practice a couple different things to do uh, with sorting data. Let's say that we want to have the days in order from 1 through 7, and then the meals also in order, breakfast, lunch, and dinner for each day. Well, my tip for you is that you want to sort the data you want chunked together last. So let's say I want the days to be chunked together. I want all day one together, all day two together, all day three together. Then I'm going to sort the day last. Okay? That means I'll have to sort meal first. So go ahead, you can right click on meal, and you're going to sort the sheet from A through Z for meal. So now it's chunked by breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Now I want to sort the day. I want that to be chunked next. So go ahead and right click on the day and sort it from A through Z. And as you can see, I have now chunked the days together in order. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And everything's in order from breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Okay. Let's say that we now want the opposite. We want breakfast chunked together, lunch chunked together, and dinner chunked together, but we still want the days to be in order. So I'm going to go back to the data we had originally. So let's go back to my tip. We want to sort the data you want chunked together last. So I'm going to sort meal last because that's what I want to be chunked together. Okay? So that means I'm going to sort day first. Put in order from 1 through 7. And then I'm going to chunk the meals together. So I have breakfast, 1 through 7, lunch, 1 through 7, and dinner, 1 through 7. Hopefully now you are experts at freezing columns and rows, knowing when to do that, and then sorting data. And as you can see, as we sort the data, these top three cells did not move at all because they're frozen. Let's discuss how to find the max and min of data sets. So on Excel, or I guess on Google Sheets, you can do various formulas. There's a lot of useful ones. I'm just going to teach you max and min. And it's really easy to do. I'll just show you with some examples. So let's say that we want to find the max and the min of all of the data. I'm going to label it here. Max of all data and min of all data. To find the max or the min, the first thing you have to type is an equal sign. Next, I want to find the max of the data. I'm going to write the word max. And as you can see, it's now going to search for the maximum value in a numeric data set. So you have to enter in numbers. Then you're going to do parentheses, and in the parentheses you're going to 
click and drag whatever set of data you want to find the max out of. So I'm wanting to look at all the data. I'm going to click and drag all of the calories, end parenthesis, press enter, and it has found that the maximum of all your data is 760. You can record it in this box here. I'm going to say 760 calories. And that happened, let's say 760 right here, uh, dinner on Monday. Monday dinner. Great. Let's now find the minimum of the data. So it's the same, equal sign, min instead of max, open parenthesis, go ahead and click and drag all the data you want to study, end parenthesis, enter, 253 calories. 253 calories was breakfast on Tuesday. Great. Now let's say that I want to find only the max of breakfast and how convenient breakfast is already all sorted together. Then I go max of break, so I'm say break for breakfast or break for breakfast, break I guess, um, equals max. And instead of choosing all of the data, I'm only going to select the data from breakfast. So that's 547 calories. And that happened during uh, Wednesday. And then let's say I want to find the min of breakfast, or when you ate the last, least calories for breakfast. Then you go equal min parenthesis. Select the data that you want by clicking and dragging. And when you click and drag, you hold onto it until you have all the data you want. And that's still. 253, which makes sense. That happened again on Tuesday. So I guess they were super hungry on Wednesday because they didn't eat enough on Tuesday. All right. Now let's say that we want to find the max of lunch instead. So I'm going to go ahead and write it here. Max of lunch. Now I'm going to do it below just so I can still reach the data equal max, open parenthesis, and now I'm only going to select the lunch data, which starts here, drag and drop. So the max of lunch, max calories for lunch was 568 calories, and that happened on, I believe that's Thursday, day four. And let's say you want to find the min of lunch, again equals min, parenthesis, Go back here, click and drag. Min of lunch was 328. Oops. And that was on Wednesday. So that makes sense, right? This person ate a lot for breakfast on Wednesday, didn't eat so much for lunch. They're full still. And it's really interesting to see this because you can now compare the minimums and maximums for each meal. So really helpful in a really quick way instead of you manually sorting through the data. It's so easy to type in these um, formulas and find minimums and maximums. Last thing I'm going to teach you is how to make graphs. And so let's say that the first graph I want to make is graph of day one data. So what does that mean? That means that I now want all of day one to be chunked together. Right now is it chunked? It is not. All the days are separated. It's instead chunked by meal, and so I'm going to go ahead and sort by day now. Since breakfast, lunch, and dinner is already in order, if I now sort by day, just sort sheet A through Z, we have the days properly chunked together. Okay. So since we know that all of this data is from day one, I can kind of just ignore these three data points. They all just tell you it's day one data. So I'm going to instead focus my graph on the three different meals and the calories for that day. So the ways you make a graph is you select a day that you want to study. So right now it's just breakfast, lunch, and dinner and the uh, appropriate calories for each of those meals. And then you press insert and chart. Okay, I'm going to make this window a little bit bigger so we can study it more. Great. So over here we have the amount of calories for each meal, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then over here is just our scale, 
it's good to go. Let's make sure that it is properly labeled. And so the way you want to do this is in this customize, if you click on the chart, or I guess this graph, it should show you customize. You can go to uh, chart and axis titles. So for the chart title, you usually want to mention your two independent variables or whatever variables you're looking at. In this case, it's calorie or caloric consumption per meal on Mondays. So that's why I would title my, uh, my graph because I'm looking at how many calories I eat per meal and specifically on Mondays to be very specific when you're titling your graphs. And then let's go to axes titles. Let's see. So on this little uh, drag and drop menu, you can select horizontal or vertical axis title. So I'm going to start with the horizontal axis title. So that's down here, and that's telling me breakfast, lunch, or dinner, so it's meals. Now I want to do the vertical axis title, and that's just telling me calories consumed. And if there was a unit, you would include the unit here in parentheses, but there's not really a unit for calories, it's just cal. I'll just write cal. Okay? So I can see that over here my scale is good because it starts at zero. You always want to make sure that your graph is starting at zero, otherwise the graph is not completely accurate. And then everything else is properly labeled. It looks good. Great. So let's say that now you want to, and again, let's say that it wasn't zero, then you would want to go to this uh, you want to click on whatever axes you want to edit, and it, over here it says min value. Let's say it's not at zero. You can change it to zero. If you want to change something else, you can say like 100, and it would adjust it, but we just want the minimum for the axis to be zero because that's the most accurate way to look at data. Now, right now we have a bar graph. That is totally fine. Bar graphs are showing you separate categories. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner are not continuous. There are three separate meals. Um, if we're looking at temperature or change over time, then we want to look at a line graph. Okay, so just keep that in mind as you're making your graphs uh, using the other data. So I'm going to go ahead and I want to uh, copy this chart. And then let's go ahead and paste it into our Google Doc over here. Graph of day one data. Great. Looking good. Next, I want to make a graph of breakfast data. 